every single technological revolution that has changed the way that people work, but it's ultimately created more opportunity for people. And you know, there are pundits predicting that this might be the last, but I think just the opposite. I'm an optimist on this and the optimist and an optimist that it's going to create opportunity for everyone. Do you think it will be possible to generate, so use generative AI to create dynamic objects, like you mentioned, trees in the Unreal Engine world, so create meshes and textures and empower the creator to create faster? Use meta knobs, like hyperparameters versus very nuanced, where you can control much faster the look of a face, the look of a tree, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think that's the central challenge of the next decade of game engines and AI for you know content creation of all sorts. Um, because you have two very different models of the world that are emerging. Um, there's the scene graph. Uh, the technical term we use to describe the set of all of the objects in the world in a 3D world maintained by Unreal Engine or another engine. Um, you know, so in the videos you saw, it's the rocks and the trees and the snow um, and the bridge and the people and all of these things. And each one um, has enormous amounts of data attached to it. Some are like texture maps, um, some are sound files, some are animation files, um, and you know, enormous amounts of detail all stored there in that procedure. And in this computer, precise computer graphics representation that enables rendering it from any perspective with any settings and so on. It's a completely general system that has complete context about the state of the world at any point. And so you can always precisely reproduce it. If you play the same scene 10 times in a row, it's always the same. It's never randomly changing. You're like, oh no, why did it, that this character's face change midstream? Yeah. But it's also you know, rather limited because you have to do, build everything manually. And that's costly and it's time consuming. It requires expertise. And then you have this other model of the world, which is what AI sees or thinks. Uh, you know, if we could peer into what's really happening and its parameters, there's something like the mushy connections of neurons um, in a brain. Um, it has a vast amount of knowledge about the world and about graphics and about uh, images and about people and about everything else. Um, it's stored in a human incomprehensible form, but it can be extracted uh, through queries, like asking it to produce an image from a prompt or a video from a prompt or whatever. But the huge problem with that is it's very mushy data. Uh, we don't know how to give it how to give it a command that will give us a precise result. And if it produces one image one time and we change our prompt slightly, it might produce something completely different. We are unable to art direct it. Um, and so it's this completely untamed tool. And I think you know when when we figure out more and more ways to merge these and connect these two together, you can imagine AI enhancing the process of content creation um, in a traditional scene representation. You can re imagine the, the scene representation being shared with the AI, so the AI not only sees a prompt, but also here's a list of all of the objects in the world and their characteristics and so on. And it can learn more about how those objects should move and interact. And so you, if you get a constant feedback cycle going back and forth between an engine and AI, then I think you can get the best of both worlds, stable scenes, um, but also the higher productivity of being able to get content out and the ability to like select specific parts of it and art direct those um, and to have those art directions stick and be recognized as part of this permanent scene representation. Yeah, I can't wait until AI can operate not in the space of pixels, but in the space of scene graphs, creating objects yeah. in the scene graph, whether it's like you mentioned audio or any of the things that you mentioned about that empower the creator. Yeah, that's a super exciting future. Um, I wonder if you could speak to uh, a fear that people have on this topic of um, artists, engineers, fear losing their jobs, uh, being replaced by AI. Uh, are there words of hope that you can offer them? This is certainly the most extreme example of it because AI is just so far ahead of prior technologies, but similar fears were had in every other industry. Um, there's a fear that uh, digital music th synthesis uh, would obsolete musicians. And um, there's a very brief period of time in which songs with digital music instruments, like the early, early mini Moogs and uh, Yamaha synthesizers weren't yeah. allowed to win certain music industry awards because they weren't considered real music. Um, and then, you know, over time the people were educated and um, realized, oh, these are just instruments people are playing and they're controlling them the same way they did before. Um, there are similar questions about is, you know, computer art built in Photoshop really art? Uh, or is it just, you know, goofy computer stuff? And, you know, I think nowadays digital artists have gained respect. And I think 
you know, if you look at just the tools that have existed in Photoshop, some of them are pretty sophisticated. Um, and nowadays they have AI features, but I think AI is ultimately going to be another tool in the artist's tool set. And, um, you know, I, I think it's going to become a more powerful, directable, and human serving tool in the future. And I think a lot of the alienation comes from the prompt either being immensely powerful at giving you an entire creation, but then being completely unwilling to let you control the nuances of it. That, that feels alienating. You give it an image, but you're like, you know, replace the image of, replace this part of it with this thing, or make that object green, and it just, like, it can't do it. Often it can't be convinced with any number of words uh, in the prompt. Yeah. And that makes it feel like the computer is taking control away from us, um, you know, humans and artists, um, and is refusing to do what we want and has its own opinions, right? It feels like a competitor. Or I think when when we have much, much, much more nuanced control of it, and artists can go in and just, you know, like, you know, let's enhance this object, do this, do that, do that, they'll feel it's, a, you know, like a, some of the tools that exist in Photoshop, which are in some ways compared to a, a paintbrush or superpowers already. Um, AI will come to feel like that too. And will increasingly serve creators creating and enhancing a work in a way that feels just a natural extension of their own, you know, their own bodies and, and minds. And of course, there is a real human pain to layoffs and, there is a hype around AI and then companies might try to implement AI systems and in so doing lay off a bunch of folks and that the pain that those folks feel is real. I think there's always going to be pain with these kinds of transformation that's happening and it's a terrible pain. Pain in general and the human experience is terrible. Uh, but I think I'm personally excited by the human AI collaboration as you've described in this whole process. So I think if you just keep being open to using the tools, constantly trying the cutting edge tools, how they can make you more productive, how can they empower you as a creator, as an artist, or as an engineer, uh, I think you're gonna just keep winning.